Joining me today is Stephen Worrell, Managing Director of Microsoft Australia. Welcome, Stephen, and thank you so much for joining me in conversation today. It's my great pleasure, Dermot. Great to meet you. Sort of tell us a little bit about what you think the barriers are to bringing truly disruptive thinking into problem solving um, in your organisation, um, but in organisations in general. I don't think to suggest that tech firms, because of the nature of us being in the tech industry, therefore we have some unique insight into disruptive thinking. Um, clearly our industry operates and moves at a rate and pace, which, which demands that you have to be agile, but I think that's true in other industries as well. Uh, and so I, I think our reflection Dermot, would be on a, on a basic concept that we've used successfully at Microsoft and other companies have different approaches to this, of course, but we, we talk about a thing called growth mindset. And it was, it's a term that was popularized by Carol Dweck, who's a, a, an academic in the US. She wrote a book called Mindset, which looked at uh, the, uh, and I'll do this very simply because there's a lot more to it, but the, the simple distinction that anyone can choose to have a growth, growth mindset, someone who decides that they want to be a, a learn it all, not a, not a know it all, uh, is an important starting point for disruptive thinking. Because if you're in that mindset where you feel you, you want to learn, you're curious, you're thinking that there are things out there that you don't fully understand or the connections you don't really see just yet, uh, as, as simple as that psychology is, that puts you in, I think, and we've certainly proven to be true at Microsoft, put you in a better place. Uh, and so that important distinction, I think, has helped us as we've, we've um, looked at all the disruptions in our business over the last 10 years in particular. Um, and I've, I've got a quote here from you. Not so long ago, you said, technology is at an intersection of most of the solutions to big problems that we have, um, including sustainability. And so at, at Microsoft, you've got, you've got the people, you've got the technology, you've got the tools and the partners at your disposal to accelerate and, and hopefully amplify and get to scale some of those outcomes for both environment and our society. So the question I have for you, building on what you've both said and, and, and have done, um, how do uh, companies like your own or tech companies open their doors, their knowledge, their experience, the tools for the not-for-profit sector, for academics, researchers, governments, and, and collaborate for good. Um, and perhaps maybe tell us a little bit about some of the examples that are, yeah. Microsoft are doing. I'd be happy to, to touch on a few examples, but be, before I do that, I, I, I think there's an important distinction or a, an important um, uh, statement to make in, in regards to the topic. And that is that Microsoft is, is a large commercial enterprise. In fact, the second largest on the planet based on current valuations. Uh, we have a responsibility to lead as it relates to creating a sustainable pathway for our own organisation, all of our emissions, scope one, scope two, scope three. And you might imagine for a, an organisation with our footprint, they are very considerable, um, uh, those emissions and indeed the footprint that we have. And so there's two thoughts here, Damon. I think first and foremost, we're a commercial enterprise and uh, we we... Uh, need to ensure that we uh, are leading the way in terms of what a contemporary forward-thinking enterprise is, is, is doing and is planning and is working on in terms of that pathway to decarbonizing our operations. Uh, so we've made our statements and they're all public. Um, that is important because it helps to set the scene for how other organizations might consider their own challenges to the extent that we have resources and capabilities that many companies don't. And so we have that responsibility to, to, play, to, play, that, to play that role. Of course, that leads to commercial opportunity. Let's be, let's be honest, because our technologies will then be used by organizations to help them uh, create sustainable ways of doing their business. And, and I think um, that goes together. Uh, and, and so it should, because we've seen how market signals and in fact, invest, the investment community has helped to trigger a, a wave of investment in green technology over the last decade. And, and very specifically in the last couple of years, we've seen a massive acceleration. Um, that is the market operating. And I think um, that's a, a logical, rational way in which we as a community and a society should be thinking about the transition to help create the right settings so that every organization is, uh, is, is, is helped or is at least given the guide as to how they might move along their own pathway. Second thought, of course, then is um, there's, there's a responsibility, but there's also an obligation for us to, to play our role working side by side with 
the many, many other participants in this conversation. That's why it's so important because uh, Microsoft, in fact, no organization would, would uh, reasonably suggest that they have the answers or that they know how they're going to help uh, address all of their challenges. No, no one could say that. And if they did, they'd, they're probably misguided. Uh, it's by working with uh, governments, by working with the social enterprise sector, it's by working with scientists that we're going to find uh, the solutions to the, some of the challenges that we're working on inside our organisation. And so locally, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of the partnership we've established with CSIRO. Um, that partnership is, is at an early stage, uh, to be fair. We've been working with CSIRO for a couple of years, but my, my hope and ambition over time is that it becomes a, a very important partnership for the country because uh, we, we, we live in a global uh, digital world and uh, global multinationals that provide digital capability that helps to run much of our economy and Microsoft is in that category we have a role to play to help ensure that that technology can then be complemented with science and other capability to be directed in the ways that are most impactful for our national interest. Uh, and so the partnership with CSIRO, we've worked on programs up in the Northern Territory and in Queensland in relation to biodiversity, um, helping to protect um, the uh, recent season of turtle hatchlings in Cape York um, to use artificial intelligence and some drone technology to map the movement of feral pigs so that we could then direct the park rangers to intersect those feral pigs before they, um, they walk straight into a, a, a hatchling area. Uh, and that has had um, dramatic impact and, and has help, helped preserve uh, many, many uh, turtle hatchlings through the last season. But whether it's plastics in our oceans, in our riverways, uh, whether it's decarbonisation and how we provide auditable and verifiable pathways for organisations to prove that they are on track, um, the work with CSIRO is, is deep and, and varied, and we're uh, very excited about the future. As a, a previous park ranger 30 years ago, um, I'm, I'm excited about that example because, um, you know, managing those problems at scale is, is in some ways the challenge because you can, you know, it's, you can't do those type of things with the level of intensity that's required in a, in a normal thing without the type of tech that uh, we're seeing coming to help um, do that. So I think that, that that's super exciting. What do you think it would take for Australia to be a renewable export energy superpower? We have so many unique natural assets. Uh, and of course, we also have our location here in Asia, which will continue to be an economic powerhouse for the world as we recover from the pandemic. Uh, and so I think it's this idea of collaboration and that's at the heart of the Climate Leaders Coalition, which uh, as a group of business leaders who have come together with that, that broad belief that it's by working together, we can make more progress than we will alone. Part of the exciting part of, of working with the, the tech sector has been engaging with young people. And I've been struck by the amazing, smart young people, particularly from so many diverse uh, backgrounds, coming together, wanting to use their tech skills to try and solve social and environmental challenges. Um, are you seeing that in Microsoft and, and are you seeing that in the, in the sector? Without a doubt, Dermot, we're seeing that uh, across the board. And, and I think th this is the opportunity for us in a way, isn't it? Because we've got um, you know, the, the next generation coming through who are digitally native, connected to their peer group and to the world around them in a way that we could only have imagined, when, well, at least when I was going through school. Uh, and they're seeing the power of possibility that by uh, as a citizen scientist or as someone who's just passionate about a particular challenge you can change the world th through using these digital capabilities and connecting with an audience and then building momentum and connecting with other stakeholders you might actually bring that other piece to the solution that you, you're missing so it's a it's a big trend and i think it's something that we all uh, we, we want to make sure we tap into in the most way, effective way possible because again, I think that's it's a combination of science, technology, and then great thinking that's going to help us address the biggest challenges we're facing. Yeah. Um, does that does that give you hope that in Australia, um, that Australia could play a leading role globally in using technology to solve some of these um, big challenges that we're facing with the the type of skills that the young people are that you're talking about? I mean, I'm a I'm an optimist on any on a given day, uh, Dermot, but if you just go to a school, connect with the school, connect with the university, uh, come, come along to one of these protege conversations and you, your mind is is blown by uh, the possibilities that our, our, our kids and our uh, young students, young adults 
see in the world around them and how um, they look at things very differently, not surprisingly. And, and boy, oh boy, do we need it? Because for all the reasons that we've been talking about, perhaps you know, 20 years into a conversation about climate change, we've not really made the progress that anyone uh, would expect us to have made, certainly not here in Australia. I, I think um, there's different reporting on progress, but in the last OECD report, we, we don't come up uh, favorably in terms of nations that are making progress. And yet we know there's a massive uh, sense of uh, uh, impatience in, in our community and, and most certainly in the younger generation for us to, to do more and to do it now. And I think the possibilities there are very significant. Do we as leaders need to listen more to those young disruptive thinkers about you know, what, what they're doing both inside our own organisations but outside as well? For anyone, again, casting back to when I was at school, uh, climate change, if we just pick that as one example, but that, that wasn't as big a topic as, as we were uh, for, for, for me back then as it is for my kids or your kids or the current uh, generation coming through. Again, um, the pressing nature of the challenge and the latest report, the IPCC report, just renders uh, incredibly explicit just how urgent the need now is for us to to take that, uh, that urgent action. But certainly um, the, the, a younger generation, a younger cohort is part of the reason why we're so vitally interested in uh, connecting with our education system and why we run programs in schools and across universities is because that helps to inform us in terms of where is the world going? What, what, what is the next generation thinking and how are we going to make sure that we are relevant and connected and providing the support that we think uh, we can provide? And so I think that's vital for any organisation. And I imagine that's very, very much the case at WWF. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you were to give one piece of advice, you know, but actually particularly to the, the young people that we talked about earlier, um, to, for them to think big about how we solve these massive global challenges or opportunities, um, what, what would be that piece of advice? Well, there's probably two thoughts. One would be be optimistic because, um, and, and, and as we established earlier, I am an optimist, but I really do fundamentally believe that we are innovative uh, uh, and that we can make changes when we uh, we have to. We've proven that, I think, in the last uh, in the last 18 months dealing with this pandemic. Things that have happened in the last 18 months, I quite frankly didn't didn't think I would see in my lifetime the speed with which government and business were able to operate, the way in which things have changed, community expectations about how health services will be delivered fundamentally changed you know, forever. So I, I, I would just be optimistic because I think when we get into a conversation about climate change, quite often I hear in my uh, you know, engagement with kids, my, my own kids and their network, that there's a sense of fatalism in some cases that comes up, which I think then stymies the uh, next uh, theme, which is um, get involved, take action. Um, tell, uh, tell the older generation where they're off track, um, get engaged with CSIRO, talk to government, engage with business, find the network that you feel uh, can represent you and your idea in the best way and, and get to work because uh, it's, it's, an, it's, it's this effort as a collective that we're all in this together and together we can find a way out. Uh, I, I think they'd be the two themes that I'd, I'd, uh, I'd share, Dermot. Stephen, thank you so much for talking to us today. Really appreciate you sharing your thoughts with us on how we seize the opportunity of a, in a disruptive world. Thank you. It's my pleasure.